Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we will talk about the another group of parasites which are under the epicomplexa. But here, unlike the uh, parasite, whatever we have discussed in the previous class, the parasite is from another subclass. Okay, so so far we have, whatever we have discussed, those parasites they belong to coccidia. Okay, so I mean to say that those parasites which are infecting the gastrointestinal tract and sometimes they cause tissue cyst formation in the muscular tissue and sometimes in the brain or inside the central nervous system. Okay, but here today, from now on, what we are to discuss is under the subclass pyroplasmia. So this group of parasites, they are not infecting the gastrointestinal tract. Rather, they are infecting the uh, blood vascular system. Okay, so the in this, under this uh, subclass pyroplasma, there is one order, there is this pyroplasmida. So under this one, there are two family, which are one of the most important disease of cattle. Okay, one of the most important disease of cattle. So these are under the family Babesiidae and Tyleridae. Okay, so these parasites, Babesia is and Tyleria, these are one of the most important uh, protozoan, not only protozoan, the infectious disease of cattle. Okay, so here, the parasites, they are uh, strictly obligate, uh, I mean obligatory, they are heterogeneous life cycle, meaning that they are in direct life cycle, where unlike in case of coccidia, there will be cyzogony and there will be gametogony. But here in this case, in the same host, but here in, in uh, and uh, Babesia and Tyleria, there will be cyzogony in vertebrate host and there will be gametogony in another host. That means in the blood sucking arthropod vector. Blood sucking arthropod vector. Okay, so cyzogony, that, meaning that it is a sexual reproduction occurs in the vertebrate host, whereas sexual reproduction occurs in the arthropod vector. Okay, so next slide. So this uh, today we will talk about the family Tyleridae. In next class, maybe if we can finish today, we will talk about Babesia. Okay. So one of as I have said, one of the most important cattle disease or bovine disease is Tyleria. Okay. So under this one, Tyleria annulata, which is prevalent in tropical countries, including India. Tyleria parva, which is prevalent in African countries, and Tyleria quai, which is also prevalent in India and some part of America, and Tyleria mutans, Tyleria lorenzi, Tyleria hirsa, and Tyleria ani. Okay, so Tyleria anulata and Tyleria parva, we're going to look into detail, and Tyleria equi also. Okay, so if you see the general characteristic, these, as I have said, these are blood parasites which are infecting the hemopoietic cells. Mm, then the, they are obligatory, or that means they are requiring intermediate host. So they, the intermediate host is exoditic. If you remember, I think you have said it in entomology class, exoditic like Bufilas, Hyloma, then Exodes and all these Rhephocephalus, they belong to exodetic. Okay, so unlike coccidia, as I have said, they are infecting the blood vascular cells. Okay, so the they are infecting macrophages and B cells. Here in this, there will be a sexual generation, that is the cyzone stage occurs. Whereas in RBC also, they some some stage of the parasite we call pyroplasm we will see in the picture okay then how does the parasite looks like the parasite is 
uh, looking like a ring or rod or comma or sometimes it's like a Maltese cross meaning that it is they are tetrads for organisms they will be occur occurring in the uh, RBC that we will see in the picture also okay so this is one as I have said that this is the stage that is infecting WBC okay which I'm going back one slide Okay. That means inside the macrophages or inside the B cells, inside the mononuclear cells, the, these small green, purple dots, these are the cyzone. Okay, that means these are the asexual stage, asexual stage of the parasite. These are the cyzone. This we call it as coach blue body. Very important and we often ask in exam, we write short notes about KBB. Okay, so similar to this one, if you remember, if you recall, that there is one stage of the parasite in Leishmania, that is the emastigot stage occurs inside the macrophage that we call, if you remember, that is Leishman Donovan body. But here in this case, it is the asexual stage that occurs inside the cytoplasm of the mononuclear cells, inside the cytoplasm of the mononuclear cells, so we call them as coach blue body okay then another thing is that what we call infecting the rbc we call them as pyroplasm okay pyroplasm this one if you can see or let's say this one okay which is infecting the rbc the easiest way to remember is i feel that you just compare with the parachute just compare with the parachute hmm. this is the Where's my pointer? This is the wing or the top, the roof of the parachute, and these are the string. Okay, there will be these are the nuclear body or the chromatin body, the dark purple color, and the white, there will be white cytoplasm inside. Okay, these are this one is the organism, 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 this one is the organism. Okay, we will see what really happens. Okay, if you see the transmission, the parasite is transmitted, as I have said, it requires an intermediate host, that's why the parasite is transmitted by the bite of a tick. Okay, in this case, usually there are three host ticks, like Anhyloma at Anatolicum, which will be in fact transmitting Tyleria anurata. I hope you have studied one host tick, two host tick, and three host tick in your entomology class. Okay, they transmit by transstadial transmission. I'll explain what exactly is transstadial transmission. It means if I'm just okay, this is the adult of the adult tick. The adult tick lays egg in the grass or in the environment. From this egg, after one week or so, they will hatch the larva. Okay, so when the larva, in case of one ho three host tick, this larva will climb and feed on the one kettle hat if that kettle is infected with hyleria it will go down and it will mold to nymph and this nymph will what should i say it will transmit to another host okay suppose that means one stage got the infection one stage picked up the infection another stage transmit suppose this nymph climb on one horse which is infected with thyleria okay so when this tick draw blood when this tick ingests blood it will come down to the um, the environment in, in if, if this is a three horse tick it will climb on another horse then this tick that means this stage the nim stage which obtain infection will transmit the infection as an adult okay so i'm just summarizing stage to stage transmission means one stage obtained infection one stage transmit one stage obtained transmission another stage transmit the disease okay in case of babesia we will see that the adult tick will the, there is one room mode of transmission called uh, trans ovarian transmission 
the adult tick obtained the infection and she has passed down through her offspring. We call this as trans ovarial transmission. Okay, so okay, so three host tick like Hyloma anatolicum, they are the one which is transmitting the disease. They, they play important role in transmission of the disease, as I have said. If suppose the larva obtain infection from one host, the nim will transmit. If the nim obtain one uh, infection from one host, let's say kettle A, it will transmit infection to kettle B. Okay, so the sporozoids, that means the infective stage, they accumulate in the salivary gland of a tick. After seven, five to seven days of attachment, the sporozoid are discharged from one host, I mean, from a tick to the animal in which the tick is infesting. Okay, so these things, I'll repeat everything. I'll explain everything again in the pathogenesis. Okay, so thylariasis, it's, it, the meaning is, I mean, the disease is defined as it is an acute lymphoproliferative disease of cattle which is characterized by febrile condition and there will be limb node enlargement. Okay, remember this, this point. Okay, so understanding the disease is really, really important based on this definition. Okay, it is an acute lymphoproliferative disease which is characterized by febrile condition and limb node enlargement. This will um, tell you what is the pathogenesis and this will tell you what is the, the subsequent uh, clinical signs and symptoms. Once we have come to the pathogenesis, I'll, I'll come back again. Okay, after this, there will be limb node enlargement, there will be subsequently the, the parasite will invade the RBC and leads to rupture of uh, rupture of RBC and hemoglobin urea. Okay, so all this introduction I'm just throwing, you might be a bit puzzling, you might be a bit lost here, but once we come to the pathogenesis, everything will be clear. Okay, so these are some of the species. Okay, one is Thyleria annulata, as I have said. This is causing tropical bovine thyleriasis, which is transmitted by Hyloma anatolicum, uh, which will infect the macrophages and RBC. The macrophages, there will be coats, blue body, RBC. In RBC, there will be um, pyroplasm. <laughs> In case of Thyleria parva, as I have said, this occurs mostly in African countries, in Rhodesia and in many parts of Africa, South Africa. The parasite is transmitted by Rhipicephalus appendiculatus. It is a brown ear tick which is infecting B cells and RBC. Please mark this point. One is that in case of Thyleria annulata, the, the, sizon, the sizontal stage occurs in the macrophages, whereas the sizontal stage of Thyleria parva occurs in B cells, B lymphocyte cells. Okay, another one is Thyleria mutans, which is also caused, which is causing bov benign bovine thyleriasis, which will infect lymphocytes and RBC. And very important is Thyleria equi, which was earlier known as Babesia equi, but now it is named to Thyleria equi which is causing equine pyroplasmosis and Thyleria lorenzi, which is infecting B cells and RBC that cause corridor disease. All these things we will come, okay? So let's see in detail what happened, what is really Thyleria annulata and what is the pathogenesis and all this, okay? So I want your full attention here. This is a really, really important parasite, okay? So the host, will go in systematically, we will go in detail. The host will be Thyleria annulata, is the name of the parasite, and the host will be buffalo and cattle, especially cross-bred cattle. Okay, it is having a long history in India. It, it is having a long history in India. In India, when after independence, government of India, they decided that 
after independent after india got independence the government of india have decided to improve their milk production during i think you remember also that uh, even there was what was that quite revolution was there by Vergis Korean and all this. Okay, so they have imported, uh, they have imported um, cross uh, cattle from USA, I mean, Britain and Europe, like Holstein, Fridge and, and um, Guernsey, Brown, Swiss and all this. Those are very, very susceptible to one disease. There is, that is they are really in, in getting an infection by Thaleria anulata. Okay, so due to that condition, there was an extensive research to generate vaccine also. In IVRI, they have formed a vaccine against this Thaleria anulata. Okay, so later on, the, when the crossbred was diluted by in, what is that, the indigenous cattle, the, the organism, the disease subsided. But in recent years, again, when as the crossbred population have come up again, these parasites, the, the incidence of this wow. disease have climbed up again. Okay, so the disease is transmitted by hyloma and naturally come by stage to stage transmission. I mean to say stage to stage means one stage obtain infection and another stage transmit infection. Okay, so their location, as I've said, please mark it. It is the size on stage occurs in the macrophage and the RBC, the pyroplasm occurs in the RBC and the gametogony occurs in hyloma anatolicum. Okay, so if you see their morphology, they are annular or ring form. They are a bit round as compared to Thaleria parva, which are a bit rod shaped in throat shape okay so here they are a bit annular as i've said a bit if you imagine a parachute like okay this is the top of the parachute and these are the strings just like this one this one this one this one uh, most this is very very heavy infections of the uh, bite hilaria okay now comes what the life cycle. Understanding of the life cycle will help you understanding the pathogenesis. Please, I want your undivided attention here. Okay, I'll start from here. I'll start from here. Okay, once these, once there will be stage two, stage transmission occurs, there will be injection of the sporozoid in the cattle tissue in the blood in the kettle tissue okay so this porozoid will migrate to the nearest limb node usually kettle bite i mean tick bite kettle in the ear many a times okay so they most of the parasite will enter on the prescapular limb node okay once inside the limb node this is going to be important okay once inside the the, once the parasite enters inside the limb node, they enter on the lymphocytes or leukocytes. Okay, so the parasites form, the parasite divides by cytogony and forming a cytosol. Okay, these are the cytosol. You can see individual organism. These are known as macrocyzone. There are two types of cyzone. One is macrocyzone and another one is microcyzone. Macrocyzone, they are around one micron in size, whereas microcyzone, they are around 0.5 micron in size. Okay. The coach blue body is actually the macrocyzone, which are multinucleated, which are Mm, multiples in number in the cytoplasm of this WBC. Okay, so this macrocyzone is playing mm, the host cell in which it is infecting. Okay, how it is playing? Because this macrocyzone will cause this host cell to divide. In this way, the host cells are divided into two. At the same time, they also divide and they multiply, they cause multiplication of this host cell along with they also multiply. And in this way, they cause extensive 
multiplication, subsequently the host cell will no longer able to multiply. Okay, that means they ultimately paralyze the host cell. Okay, how it is to, how it is performing is I'm just going here. They upregulate, they cause mitosis. They cause mitosis. If you remember mitosis, okay, so there will be mitotic spindle. When the host cell is just about to divide, there will be mitotic spindle. Okay, in this mitotic spindle, the parasites will align themselves, and in this way, the parasites they are dividing along with the host cell. Now, two daughter cells, two daughter cells will divide into four. Four daughter cells, four will divide. Subsequently, it will go on multiplying the host cell. Okay, so in this way, the parasite is causing lympho exhaustion. The lymph nodes are getting are getting exhausted because the parasite is multiplying. Will the parasite is allow uh, causing the host cell to multiply? In this way, the parasite is also multiplying. One, two, four continuously 8, 16, 32, and millions and millions, they multiply, then what will happen? At ultimately, there will be lympho exhaustion. That means at the beginning, there will be limb node swelling in this, in this stage. But when the host immunity get, got exhausted, ultimately, it will be limb node exhaustion. There will be lympholysis. There will be here in this stage, when the parasite is multiplying, there will be limb node swelling, at last there will be uh, atrophy of the limb nodes. Okay, then what will be the next stage? The next stage will be, this stage will divide by, means the next stage will be merozoids. Those merozoids which are infecting RBC, meaning after the cyzone is formed, they will invade the RBC. After the cyzone is formed, they will invade RBC. And this stage that is invading the RBC, we call them as pyroplasm. These are the stages, as I've said, these are the pyroplasm. Okay, I'm repeating. There are two stages that is really important. One is the microcyzone stage, which are inside the WBC. In case of uh, Tyleria nullata, it is specifically to the macrophage or the monocyte. Then the next stage is the um, pyroplasm, which is inside the RBC. This macrocyzone, which occurs inside the cytoplasm of, uh, inside the cytoplasm of the WBC, inside the cytoplasm of the macrophage, they allow the cell to divide into by mitosis. Subsequently, they cause destruction or lympho exhaustion and they, they jeopardize the host immunity. Okay, so, once this pyroplasm, once this pyroplasm is formed, okay, once this pyroplasm is formed, they are waiting for the host. That means they are waiting for the thick host, thick intermediate host to ingest. Okay, so once this pyroplasm is ingested inside the tick, inside the gut of a tick, it will multiply as male male gametocytes or female gametocytes subsequently they will fuse together and they form a zygote haploid haploid becomes a diploid then subsequently from the gut from this is the nim gut the gut of a tick subsequently they migrate to the salivary gland inside the salivary gland in type 3 acinar cells of salivary gland of a tick I'm repeating, type 3 acinar cells. I'm just going and show you. Okay, so the sporozoid accumulates in the salivary gland of type 3 acinar cells. Then they are waiting for the host. Okay, so let's say this is a nymph, and when it becomes an adult, there will be formation of a sporozoid. So when the adult Tick is climbing on to the kettle, then after five to seven days, it will inject the sporozoid. Okay, then completing the life cycle. This understanding the life cycle, as I have said, is important for understanding the pathogenesis. 
let's see after attachment of the hyaloma anatoly come thick for five to seven days the sporozoids which are formed in the acidal tree cells of salivary gland is injected and subsequently the sporozoid enters in the macrophages or in the monocytes inside the lymph nodes so the parasites inside the lymph nodes in the parasites inside the, the macrophage cell or the monocytes in the lymph node they escape to from the parasite of forest vacuole to the cytoplasm if the parasite remains in the parasite of forest vacuole what will happen uh, some digestive enzymes will be poured in in the parasite of forest vacuole so the parasite doesn't want to stay in the parasite of forest vacuole rather they escape in the cytoplasm of the uh, the, of the phagocytic cells then subsequently the phagocytic cells is no longer able to kill the organism okay so due to its presence inside the uh, mo mononuclear cells like lymphocytes or inside the macrophages or inside the monocytes okay especially monocytes and macrophages they cause clonal expansion this is known as retrogressive proliferation okay meaning that they cause uh, mitosis as i have said they cause mitosis of the cell they upregulate this host mononuclear cells for mitosis in the same time they also divide along with it okay this is known as retrogressive proliferation okay so in this way the parasite cause multiplication of the host cell at the same time they multiply and they multiply many many generations ultimately all the resources for multiplication are used up then subsequently there will be lympho exhaustion okay now let's come to the pathogenesis okay so when the tick bite in the ear and they have the sporozoid is injected and subsequently the the parasites have come to the nearest limb node and there will be uh, retrogressive pro proliferations inside the nearest limb node especially the prescapular limb nodes at the beginning as i have said there will be limb node swelling okay so there will be febrile condition that means there will be um, fever and there will be hypersalivation there will be lacrimation all these things you can see and due to clonal expansion and retrogressive proliferation as i have said there will be division of the host cell host macrophages or host monocyte cells then ultimately as the resources are used up oh, there will be lympho exhaustion and lympholysis leading to atrophy of the lymph node and ultimately there will be leukopenia so once there is leukopenia occurs then what will happen that the animal is susceptible to every single organism that is infecting okay that means the animal is lame all right So after the that episode occurs inside the limb nodes, what will happen is that they subsequently form the merozoids or the pyroplasm that invade the RBC. This stage, these are the states that can be seen in RBC. So once there will be multiplication of the pyroplasm inside the RBC in case of Thaleria annulata. Okay, here I'm marking, I'm marking. In case of Thaleria parva, this is the, the difference between Thaleria annulata and Thaleria parva is the erythrocyte stage. That means the RBC stage is not dividing. It's, it doesn't divide anymore in case of Thaleria parva. But whereas in case of Thaleria annulata, this RBC stage will divide again. Okay, so I'll ask you an exam and the reasoning uh, in reasoning that uh, Thaleria annulata can be transmitted by mechanical root yes it is transmitted by mechanical root because the rbc is i mean the rbc stage is transmit is 
transmissible from one host to another host because the RBC stage form the RBC stage is dividing. Whereas in case of Tyleria parva, the RB, as the RBC stage is non-dividing, if you draw one one ml of infected Tyleria positive blood from one kettle, let's say kettle A, if you inject on kettle B, there will be no infection. Okay, so due to the, the due to division of the RBC due to division of the RBC stage of Tyleria annulata there will be hemoglobin urea because there will be destructions of the RBC and hemoglobin will be released and subsequently there will be diarrhea and ultimately there will be pulmonary edema due to anemic conditions and this is the causative the cause of death in case of thaleresis there will be pulmonary edema there will be emphysema there will be breathing difficulty so if you come to the clinical signs there will be limb node enlargement of the nearby <clears throat> limb node to the site of thick attachment there will be hypersalivation there will be pyrexia there will be nasal discharge and there will be dyspnea and increasing the heart rate there will be bloody diarrhea and there could be hemoglobinuria and there will be the animal as i have said there will be leukopenia there will be emaciation the animal is prone to any sort of disease and lung edema is the acute cause of mortality so on post-mortem lesion this is there will be Mm, emaciated carcass there will be pale mucous membrane and sometimes there will be enlargement of limb node or sometimes there could be atrophy of limb node okay then one of the important point is there will be punch necrotic ulcer in the abomasum this is the pathognomic lesion punch necrotic ulcer because ultimately those macrophages which are infecting the which are infected by thylaria cyzone, they necrose, especially in the abomasal wall. So once they necrose, there will be pinpoint necrosis, known as punch necrotic ulcer in the abomasum. So let's come to the diagnosis. The clinical sign is quite evid, quite clear, and it is clear cut. And there will be hype uh, in. In the endemic region, when there will be pyrexia, there will be uh, hypersalivation, there will be breathing difficulty. Many a times we suspect, and if there is a history of tick bite or if the animal is infested with tick, and we usually suspect mm, thaleriosis. Okay, so we will take blood smear examination and we will try to see the, the, the pyroplasm in the RBC, or sometimes we will examine the limb nodes. Okay, what did we do? Well, we, how did we perform limb node biopsy is 1 to 2 ml of PBS, phosphate buffer saline, or natural mm, normal saline. We will inject in the limb nodes and we will just massage for some time and then we will draw that fluid back. Then that fluid, with that fluid, we will just make a blood, just like a smear, blood smear, we will just smear over the a glass light and we will stain with um, gem stain. Then the coach blue body might be seen in case of positive animal. Okay, so this is 100% uh, sensitive specific. Okay, so another one is by serological test by ELISA and IFAT in direct fluorescent antibody technique. And direct and fluorescent antibody test is the OIE recommended test. Apart from this one, now Nowadays, they are using PCR by amplifying times one thylaria, annulata, merozoid surface protein, and sporozoid surface antigen, and thylaria, annulata, sporozoid antigen. Many antigens are being used for diagnosis. Okay, now comes one of the most important drug is buparvacone. Please note this one. If the dose is 2.5 milligram, this drug in exam in my UG class it was asked in my PG class it was asked and even in my BG it was asked buparvacone the trade name is butalex 
at the rate of 2.5 milligram per kg per dy. Okay, and another one that is really really important and is simple to use is oxytetracycline at the dose rate of 10 milligram per kg per dy. But oxytetracycline will not kill the parasites; they will only halt. They will only stop the development of the parasites. Then apart from this one, those supportive therapy, anti-diarrhea might be given and anti, what should I say, antipyrectic might be given and antihistaminic might be given, supportive therapy might also be given. And one thing that is really good, as I told you at the beginning of the class, was um, that, that there is a vaccine known as Raxavecti known as Raxavecti. It is a tissue culture life attenuated Sison vaccine. It is nothing but this one. It is nothing but this Sison. Okay, scientists, they are trying to, they, they are trying mm -hmm. prolong culture of these macrophages in the laboratory and ultimately the organism becomes attenuated and they use this as a vaccine. So at the dose rate of 2 million macrophage cells or 2 million monocyte cells are used for a single animal. Okay. Another mode of treatment is infection and treatment method, meaning that they triturate that positive, the tick which is infected with um, Tyleria organism and they triturate it, they triturate it and they give low dose of an infection. Ultimately, they control that low dose of infection with oxytetracycline, as I've said, oxytetracycline just halt or just stop the Sison development. And in this way, there is a development of an immunity. This is known as infection and treatment. They, at first they give an infection and subsequently they give treatment, infection and treatment method. Okay, last slide. Okay, that means it is pre-immunity, okay. That means those animals which are infected, which have recovered from the clinical disease. Okay, that means due to low level of infection, the animal is immune to challenge infection. The animal is immune to challenge in infection. The animal is immune. Okay, that means the animal is still having a low level of infection, but the animal have already recovered from the clinical disease so but the the problem of the primitive the, the animal will serve the animal will serve as an in uh, source of an infection okay the animal will serve as a source of Yes, they have this low level infection. Sometimes this low level of an infection form. Okay. Thank you.